Well, they, um, you know, we, we always got uh, this uh, definitive subdivision on tonight, uh, and we have it on for eight o'clock. Um, so um, we got a, we don't have a, and I, we don't have any minutes or anything else. We could do a town administrator, I mean, a, a planning administrator update <laughs> for 20 minutes. Sure. <laughs> um, the answer something, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Unless one of them can dance or sing or something, you know. <laughs> um, I did want to mention just on the topic um, of town meeting, um, I spoke with the town administrator for a while this morning, and um, I, it, it sounds as though the select board would be agreeable to having a joint meeting with us to discuss the strategy for these properties. I, I think that would be a good uh opportunity for us. Uh, the date of October 18th was thrown out as their, their next meeting as a possibility. Um, and I was wondering if that might be a date that um, people would be able to um, uh, to attend. Um, and at the same time, if we were all there or a, a quorum of the CPC was there, we could do some joint appointments for the Economic Development Committee. But I, it, I just wanted to bring up that date if it's, you know, we, we don't need to tell me right now, but if it's one that we think we can do, I'll let them know. Yeah, let's um, I, you know, let's do the best we can to move this along and not let it get buried again. Yeah, if we lose momentum, it's not going to happen. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I agree with that. So do what yeah. you can with that. Hopefully, we get enough people. Yes. Um, I mean, in terms of other things, uh, I, I'm sure I'll have more to share as we learn what next steps are with with the sewer project. I've started to join all of the. Um, you know, wastewater meetings with the DPW and the, and the consultant. So um, I'm sure we'll be, um, you know, hearing some updates and progress on that project soon. Um, I also wanted to just bring up um, our, you know, our work with Abacus. I, I know we had talked about wanting to have a, a meeting with the select board to talk about what we have done, um, that Abacus was, you know, working on a, on a final presentation. Um, and in terms of that work, I think they, Abacus was a little unsure of where to go because we, you know, the all of a sudden the sewer being, <laughs> what's that? We kind of bailed on them too, you know, I mean, we, we need to do them a little, I mean, they, 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 they need us to guide them through the end of the well, project. I mean, I think they, 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 if I recall the, the conversation with them correctly, they were like, no, we're just going to do a, 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 a recap of what we originally were going to do and what we come up with and, and essentially the, the, a, a similar presentation to what they gave us before. Um, just to, you know, because they seem to believe that keeping it pretty much the way it is and maybe adding a few of the items in that I brought up, you know, just to, just as an aside, that that was all mm -hmm. to do because they... Um, they seem to think that 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 we're overly worried about the, uh, anybody liking it or approving it or something. You know what I mean? Yes, but I think there have been so many opinions expressed about the direction of the project. I'm not sure they are entirely like they entirely understand what we want them to. I think they still need some direction from us. I mean, okay, so they, but they were telling us what they were going to do. I, 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 at the last meeting we had with them, they were saying, you know, we're going to, uh, we're, this is what we'll do. We'll put together this presentation like this, you know, based on uh, and show everything that we've mm -hmm. done up to date. I mean, that was kind of what they said they were going to do. Yes, I think um, if we, I mean, if we want more than that, I think what they were saying is at this point, I don't think they can create new concepts for us. Um, no. So I just, I mean, it might have just been, a, a, you know, a matter of that their 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 time and budget is is coming to an end. They're still going to be, you know, preparing a final report for us um, with all the information they've talked about. But in terms of the final presentation, I, I do. It, it was my sense that they were still looking for some guidance from us about how they wanted how we wanted that final presentation to to look and yeah. um, whether the audience for that was still, um, you know, intended to be, you know select board do they want to do we want them to have a community meeting is there more and i think we kind of stopped the conversation once the sewer question was coming to town meeting because right. of all the public investments that we talked about that's the one that had the support so i think we were waiting to see is are we going in that direction if so okay well now we do have a public investment that's possible yeah yeah 
Um, yeah, yeah, this may change. This may change to some extent. Although, right. okay, again, to go back to the original premise for the money that we got to do this was for a package treatment plant, which we, uh, which we now will we'll, we'll no longer need if we put sewer in. But we also yeah. said that no matter what we planned there, whatever the concepts were, um, would then be convertible eventually because we all knew the, the eventual ultimate right. goal was going to be sewer. So, right. but I do think that the development, the amount of development is much more, is, is just much greater with, with sewer. So in terms of their right. concepts, I mean, I don't think they can redo the concepts, but. Well, I can say this, that, that with, the, with, with this vote and in, in the, in the, uh, it looking as if sewer is gonna move along, the project that we have becomes a lot more believable you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because if we put sewer there, can you do all this? Yeah, we're gonna have sewer. We can do all of this. So, right. so it's a little more uh, believable that we could actually accomplish this. So, um, so I mean, there, there's something to be said for that. So, so I well, I guess right. we could have them just stop by and you know, just for a quick recap of what they have in mind of what we have in mind, and, and let and, and then send them on the way to prepare the final report. Is that what you had in mind? I mean, sure. Do you want me to ask them to attend the next meeting? I mean, it would be on Zoom anyway. Um, yeah. what, what's up? Yeah. yeah okay, Zoom, I'll, yeah. I'll see if they can do that. Yeah. That's easy okay, for good. them. So they can do it. And then, and then we'll just, we'll just discuss, we'll, we'll talk about what they were thinking about doing and then what we might want to modify that in some way. And, and, um, and then we'll get that final presentation out. Okay. Because yeah, like, um, it was mentioned a couple times last night too that project and there nobody named it but they alluded to it. Um, although the one person that had, <laughs> I love the person who said, "I've looked that whole street up. There's no place in the world they could put multifamily housing. We're <laughs> oh, yeah. living under a rock, <laughs> you know." There are a lot, <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of places. Also. Yeah. So so uh, so now the, you know this will this will uh, be a lot more believable, a lot more attainable. Um, with, with the advent of sewer, so. Yeah, okay. So, okay, and by All the right, way, right. Uh, just for the record, they're building houses on Charles Street, so we <laughs> How many, by the way, just, just do you know how many lots have been released? Have all, have all the lots been released up there? N nine have been released. Two have not been requested to be released. I don't know why, but only nine those are, are I think those available. Are in contention. Uh, Sorry? I think those are the two the contention between the contract and Possibly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just so everybody will know because I mean well, that was such a pain for such a while, and it's finally actually coming, moving along. So. Right. Hey. So. Um. Looks like the facilities master plan committee is um you know back to meetings. So um I I think uh I think late October. I I don't recall the date, but um I was going to you know attend also. Um I know uh you know. Warren is now. I, want to check um, on that. I think it may be the 18th that was the date. I'm, I'm not I sure. So. I, I got actually. I got a. Uh, did I get an email? I think I got an email. Yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Okay. That gave a date. Okay. You must have gotten it as well. Yeah, I did. I don't recall the. I don't recall it now. But it's good that they're meeting again. Um, yeah. To, yeah. You know, to move that project forward. Right. right. Um. What else? I'm going to be meeting with the North Reading um, Housing Authority later this week to talk about the possibility of taking one of their units and, and getting it onto the subsidized housing inventory, um, possibly. They had expressed some interest in that. So I think that would be um, a nice opportunity if we can make that happen. There may be a town subsidy of some sort involved um, uh, because they would need some financial support to, to do that. But it's an existing unit and they would like to keep it affordable. And right now it's not counted. Um, it's just, they happen to rent it out. Where is this? It's on Main Street. It's it's one of the two apartment buildings on Main Street. And it's, oh, okay. I think right. the number. Yeah, it's, it's one of those. It's, it's either a Park okay. Colony or the other one. Yeah, there were two. Um, actually, they still own both of them. I thought they sold one, but they didn't. They still own both, but one of them they're looking to try to, um, you know, hold on to. And um, so I'll, I'll, I'll meet with them about that. Um, Is it in Greenbrier? We, not Greenbrier. Um, it's in one of the small buildings? Yeah, it's either the one that's right on Main Street up near um, Burroughs or it's the one at Park Colony. I don't, I, there's one in each of those buildings and I don't recall which one this, this one is. 
Um, there was a, a grant received, I can't remember if I'd mentioned this previously, but the town of Linfield applied for um, a grant for some uh, technical assistance to look at a large area of um, open space um, conservation land in Linfield, but that also has connections to several of the surrounding communities, including North Reading. So um, our connection would be if um, the, the rail trail project, the land utilization committee has been working on, if that does come to fruition, that would be our connection into this large conservation area that they're looking to do. Um, and there would be a connection to the Peabody rail trail and several other um, possible uh, connections to open space and recreation. And that's sort of just starting to get off the ground, but um, I'll, I'll give you updates as, as I, I meet with them when, when they do meet, um, I you know, participate in those meetings. So um, that's just sort of getting started. Um, not a lot of heavy lifting from us, but. <laughs> that Peabody rail trail is pretty, uh, pretty good. It, they've, uh, if you ever tried riding it or walking it, it's, it's uh, quite the trail, quite the deal. <laughs> Yeah. If, um, hook, if we do something similar, hook it up. That there's a lot of uh, possibilities there. For people to travel. Yeah. yeah, that would be very nice. Um, yeah. So that's that's happening. Um, you know, we still just the subdivisions. Um, Dave, every so often, we'll just kind of go around, especially after storms, to just check out what's going on at the subdivisions. Still continue to be some issues at Shay Lane um, with. Um, you know, run off onto butters properties and some siltation and some, you know, erosion that's taking place. And Dave and I have been, uh, you know, working to, to try to get that addressed. So that's, it's been, you know, a little, a little bit tough. With, with is, that it all, is it all in that back corner, that back left corner, if you will? It's to Nutter Road. Oh, um, oh. This, the, the Nutter side, the um, the right. Southwick and Gloria parts are fine, really, but it's the it's the Nutter Road side that's more problematic. In the corner, yeah, the low point, the very corner um, near where the detention pond is. Right. So um, hopefully that'll stay somewhat under control. But I just wanted to let you know that there have been some issues there, um, and that. Dave continues to advise us that from now on, um, the, the during construction condition is going to be considered much more heavily for subdivision reviews because um, we can't just be post development that works, it has to be during the construction too. So um, that's going to become, you know, a bigger focus. Um, 35 Cedar Street is actually ready to, oh, you probably know this because they came in for their extension at the last meeting, but um, we had a pre-construction meeting um, with Dave um, and uh, they're ready to start uh, soon. So they have that kind of staked out and are, are ready to, to get going pretty soon. So that should be moving. Um, I guess that's most of the bigger stuff other than the town meeting things, which you are aware of. Um, yeah, and we didn't have any CBAs and we didn't have any minutes, minutes for this right. this week. Did you just, um, I don't know if you have any of it at your fingertips, but briefly um, talk up for just a couple of minutes about the, um, what was in what 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 were the policies or conditions that were in that 2008 vote exactly? I know that I know that it allowed uh, much more density than what we had in our motions, but yeah. But what 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 else do you, do you recall? What else was in there? Yeah. Um, so it gave a set of dens density and dimensional controls that are different from the underlying zoning. So the two options are using the underlying zoning, either residence A or residence B, whichever district it happens to be in. Or if you want to use the affordable housing overlay district zoning to allow for greater density, you can do so if you provide a certain number of affordable units within the development. And the number of affordable units required um, depends on the number of units constructed. Um, so for example, you can construct one single family house if it's 100% affordable. You can construct a, you know, two units if one of them is affordable and so on up to um, eight unit multifamily development um, with 
I, I uh, think it's two units required to be affordable in that. So if that were just sold on the open market, a developer could have the choice of either using the underlying zoning or using the affordable housing overlay district zoning, which would enable much greater density of development in exchange for having affordable you know, density bonuses, basically. Um, and in terms of you know, overall density, it's, uh, there's a lot area per dwelling unit rule of um, five, it not to exceed 5,000 square feet per unit. So while the general rule of thumb would be you know, for a half acre lot of you know, 20,000 square feet to be able to have four units on it, um, in reality, all of these properties have you know, wetlands somewhere near them or they're otherwise restricted. Um, some of them maybe could yield four units um, but others, you know, in reality wouldn't yield that many. So, I mean, that's the overall, and then there have to be, so for new properties to be added to the district, there is a set of guidelines, um, has to have a certain amount, I think it was 10,000 square feet of contiguous upland, um, although it could have wetlands, it, that there had to be that contiguous part of wetland, of um, upland. Um, there were, there were other requirements, you know, minimum lot area, I think of 10,000 square feet to be part of the district. Um, all, all those properties, the 23 properties that we identified, um, are all of those in the process of identifying those 23 properties, were they properties that could, uh, all support at, at the very minimum a single family house. Is that is that was that the criteria for choosing these 23? Um, I mean, some of them would need additional infrastructure, roadways and things like that. But so so uh, but other than that, the the baseline for these or, or were these just 23 random pro I mean 23 properties that happen to be town owned properties? No, there was a it was more than that. It was um, they so the, the, it looks as though, I mean, based on the file, because I wasn't around at the time, but it looks like the CPC went through a process of screening town-owned land to identify properties that would be suitable for housing at a pretty small, you know, small, low to moderate density. Um, and some of them are pretty small. Some of them are a little bit undersized for their underlying district, but for the affordable housing overlay district were fine um, because they still met, because it's a smaller threshold of um, lot size and frontage. It's only hundred feet of frontage. So there was a process where the CPC went about screening out properties that really looked like they couldn't be developed at all. I mean, it had to have a certain amount of contiguous upland. It didn't have to have existing street frontage because some of these don't, um, but it could be combined with other properties to reasonably have access or could have, a, you know, an unaccepted way or a dirt road built out or extended a little bit more. Um, those are pretty much the situations. Not, most of them are not totally landlocked, although a couple of them are, but you could, you could build access in. Um, they, they really vary. Some of them have really not much wetland at all nearby. And some of them do have a pretty significant portion, like 57 Haverhill Street is like half, not half, but it's, it's a big portion of it is wetland, but it's a big property. So you could still develop a small piece of it, even if you don't develop the rest think, of it. I think that another, I think that that was done administratively mostly. In other okay. words, the okay. board itself didn't get, I would know more about it, but, but I know that we just, that there was some criteria and then that was it. Yeah. And then they just, uh, and then um, I'm not sure if a consultant did it or if we did it in house. We just identified the 23 properties and then put them on the list, and they've just kind of stayed on that list since then. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, but but um, I wasn't sure uh, whether one of the criteria that they used was, or obviously one of the criteria you was that if you that you could either build on that lot or you could combine it with another lot and then build on that lot, uh, you know, so, so uh, um, I mean, this is an important point because when we, when we go back for this thing, we're gonna need to be able to say, because they're gonna ask it because the, you know, because the select board has put this thing out there that it's random and, and as if there was some uh, nefarious reason, as Dave said, to to pick those properties. We're gonna we need to make sure they know that they're all buildable. But these were more easily buildable, and that's the reason they were chosen. No other reason. Yeah, I mean, I have notes um, on from these town-owned land. I mean, there were more properties that were looked at, and several of them were eliminated from the list um, because they really weren't thought to be useful for development. Okay, 
Yeah, I mean, there are notes in the files about, oh, can combine these three par parcels to equal one single family house lot, or this property could potentially yield four, or there are wetlands on the back of this, but not on the front. So we think we can, you know, get something here. Like, there are remember, notes like that yeah, about it. Yeah, I remember, I do remember the, the, the fact that there was, that there were a number of them that we removed because of a, too, much, too much wetlands on it. Okay, yeah, that makes so, sense. Uh, <laughs> You know, but, and, and a lot of those are over, I think, by and the pond area, too. So um, There are a number yeah. over by the pond. And I remember driving by one of them. I don't remember which one off the top of my head, but one of them, I, I drove by it, and it looked like the entire frontage was a pond. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> not going to put anything there. That doesn't work. That's one on, one on um, what's the street there? When you go to, not Lakeside, but the Camo Road. On the back side of Camo Road, I think, there's one there. Okay. That's uh, all wetlands. <laughs> so, so yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So I just want I, we just <clears throat> for everybody's edification. I want to just review what was in that 2008 law, yeah. so that we uh, because as when we go to the select board, we you know we need to be as knowledgeable as we can about um, what was voted on and uh, what we're we're doing. I, I mean, I don't know that. As I said before, they can't just arbitrarily change it. If they want to make changes to what got approved in 2008, they got to go back to town meeting. So, um, but we can't, but we do, and as, as proven by this last town meeting, we can propose an article that, uh, that does limit the number of, um, you know, family, how many family homes can be on any one particular lot, mm -hmm. and, and, then, and then pass it on to the select board. The town meeting makes a decision, the select board will deal with it, so. So, um, okay, well, I, I just wanted to, um, if we're gonna start meeting on this, we all need to be up to speed on it. So, okay. so we know what's going on. So I hope that helped everybody that didn't really know what was in there. So, so um, I think we're just about there. So uh, I think we can um, get ready to start our, uh, you have a, do you, you have, um, public hearing notice probably right yes um yeah, and i know that <laughs> i'm sorry we have a whole minute um yes um i know a, attorney man is going to be signing on like right at eight because she she's toggling <laughs> between two okay. um hearing two hearings. um but yes the public hearing notice should be in the share file and see it and the, and the application maybe yeah it's usually in that application document okay. we'll see what comes up i had to download the whole thing because it wouldn't uh i couldn't get i couldn't get the plans to open it just sat there and went in circles so i had to download the whole file and then open it Oh, you know, I was able to put in there, I received today 11 by 17 sheets, so that might be easier to view. It was, um, I don't know, those, those open the paper too. Other plans uh, wouldn't open um, unless I downloaded them. Once I downloaded them and then separated them out, then I could open them all. Okay. The public hearing notice is the first yes, page in that application. Um, if if you need me to read it, I, I can read it if well, I got, I got the um, public hearing notice. Uh, so um, uh, it's right. It's, if you can open it, I don't know. You, uh, Ryan, can you see the public hearing notice? No. It's um, it's in the application document. But Ryan, if you're not able to open it, I can, I can just, um, I can read it off. Just pinwheeling away here. Yeah, that's that's what the problem I had. <laughs> um, I can. Do you want me to just go ahead and read it? If you don't mind, sorry. Sure, it'll take long enough that it'll give everyone a chance to, to sign up. <laughs> Upload, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, notice is hereby given that the North Reading Community Planning Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, October 5th, 2021 at 8 p.m. on the application of Jameson Properties, LLC, Jameson Development, LLC, 
for a definitive subdivision. Oh, excuse me one minute because someone is in the waiting room waiting to be let in. I'm sorry. I have to admit people. Sorry, I did not see that. Okay, I apologize. I will go right back to that. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Where were you? <laughs> okay, um, for a definitive subdiv subdivision plan for the property located at 39 Chestnut Street and 9 Flint Street, North Reading, Mass, map 56, parcels 74 and 80. You may participate in this hearing online and the uh, information to dial into the public hearing is given, um, which is also available on the town's website. This hearing will be broadcast live by NORCAM on their local access channels, uh, 22 on Comcast, 24 on Verizon, and on their streaming channel online, NORCAM.com. Um, comments to be considered at the hearing may be sent by mail to the CPC at 235 North Street, North Reading, or email to planning at NORCAMA.gov while the hearing remains open. The requirement for public participation ends at the close of the public hearing. A copy of this plan may be viewed by visiting the Community Planning Commission website, um, HTTP. S uh, www slash community planning slash pages slash projects uh, dash under dash review. Um, also available in the town hall for viewing. Um, okay. Oh, okay. and attorney man is joining as well. Okay, great. Okay. I've let everyone in who is asking to be let in. Okay, um, attorney man, are you going to be opening uh, this uh, discussion? You have to unmute yourself. I did. Oh, you did, okay. Sure, I would love to be able to open the hearing and I realize we're gonna have to continue it because we have a lot of things we have to do and we haven't responded to peer right. review, but if it, if it pleases the board, we'd like to do that. Yeah, why don't you make, yeah. Give us a, well, what the, It'll be a fairly quick presentation. And what I can do is share my screen and go over um, like a little PowerPoint I put together to make it a little easier to discuss. Um, I believe you can see that, can you? Yep. yep. Okay, perfect. Um, what I'm gonna do is we'll do view, oh, oh not outline, let's do it like this. Um, um, basically the pro proposed project is located off of, um, Chestnut Street and Flint Street. I just wanted to give you a general overview of the plan. So this is the, what the proposal is. It's being proposed by Jameson um, Properties, who's the developer. Owner is Jameson Development. The civil engineer is ASB Design, Thad Berry. Um, the surveyor of the project is Donahoe Survey, and I am the applicant's attorney for the project. Um, so we basically have a 23 acre parcel of land. It's the combination of two parcels. Prior, just prior to um, the COVID and the shutdown, we had presented a smaller version of the subdivision, which included only chestnut. And the project in fact um, had a smaller, um, had a smaller, Footprint. So it basically was only you know, about less than half, well, more than half of this particular site. And it only included one of the homes in the in-ground pool. It was a property that was listed existing off of Chestnut. Um, now we, we actually ended up, the, the proponent actually acquired Flint Street. So they've combined it. Um, as you can see from this plan, the existing conditions are two homes and in-ground pool um, access of one of the homes is from Flint, access for the other home is over Chestnut. Um, so we did receive some comments and I just wanted to make sure we go through them. It is in the residential, um, the RA residential district. So the dimensional requirements for traditional lots of which there are 11 or 40,000 square feet, 160 feet of frontage, which we comply. We do have two limited frontage lots, um, lot six and eight, and they are in excess of 120,000 square feet. They have a little bit more than 50 feet of frontage and they do actually have the 250 foot circle. Access for this particular subdivision is going to be over the 50, over a 50 foot right of way with a 28 foot paved traveled path. The right of way is going to be about 77, uh, about 1700 square feet. I wanted to show you here on this plan because what the right of way 
length we're calculating is the entire the entirety of it. So we go all the way up to the back and then out to Flint Street, and that's 1,722 feet. The lots three and four, but it does actually consist of a through road that will go out to Flint Street. Um, we are looking for waivers, but the waivers are basically to be able to reduce the amount of impervious area at the site. So we're looking not to put in sidewalks because there are no connecting sidewalks on Chestnut Street or Flint. Um, we're looking to waive the requirement to put berms and curbs so we can have a low impact development. And we are able to do that by not putting in the berm so we can do low impact development and have swales. I just wanted to show you this particular plan that does show um, lots eight and six and where in fact we locate the, the um, homes. There is some discussion relative to where do the homes have to be. So here is the circle. Those homes are located to the front of those circles. So the homes are not located within the circles, but are located to the front of them in order to reduce the amount of um, driveway length and for no other reason because there's ample room between the 12 foot no disturb in the front of that particular um, circle in both instances we're able to to do that but we were looking to reduce the amount of um, impervious footprint um, we did get some comments back and we did want to discuss a couple of those with the board and I'm actually going to stop my screen sharing so you don't have to continue to stare at everything um, and those are relative to fire department comments. So basically the fire department is saying any driveway that is longer than 50 feet has to either be 20 feet paved with or the home has to be sprinklered. But that means in North Reading, every home will have to be sprinklered or have a 20 foot paved width of driveway because you have a 40 foot setback. And then by the time you have that distance with regard to you know the, the street where the way actually begins because it measures from pavement, it's all 50 feet. So every home has a 50 foot driveway. So we would like to hear from the board its opinion relative to that because the, the section quoted isn't actually the mass requirement but actually a federal guideline and it's really for access roads, not driveways. So I don't know how the board feels about this, if they want us to continue talking to the fire department, but we did want a little input with regard to that so that we know how to design because it has, it obviously has a fairly significant impact to the storm water because eight foot of pavement going back is a significant change. Let me just, um, the, um, I understand where you're getting the 50 feet, but but that 10 feet you're talking about, um, that doesn't belong to the house. I know, but the driveway, when you connect to the pavement with, that's where he measures. I know, but that's, that's town land at that point. I, I, I absolutely right. understand. It's Are just that measuring? it's still... Is that what they're doing? They're measuring from the street edge? He, he measures doing from the start of the drive. Who does the measuring? I think the fire department. What's the section in the, what, what is the one that we can refer to? Yeah, the NFPA, sure, one second. Um, oh, it's NFPA? Yeah, it's not, you. It, yes, that's what I mean. So it's, oh. um, if NFPA one second, I apologize, Mr. Rodeford, let me tell you. Um, oh, he doesn't even cite it. Yeah. That's NFPA. where it comes from though, that's where I found it because yeah. it's okay. not in any regulation. Yeah, but NFPA is not a law. It, no, it actually, you know, I deal with the NFPA stuff all the time, my fireworks company. So believe me, I know how they all work. So they're not, that's not cast in stone. That's recommendations. Right. So, so we, we can maybe uh, take a look at that. Um, that might be a, an issue that would, that will come up again if we don't deal with it now. So, exactly. So and we, that's why we were looking for a little direction from you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's talk to them about it. Let's ask them to give us some some input on that. Okay. Um, and then the I, other, go ahead. the other one was um, the the, uh, the um, particular person who's in charge of the disability oversight committee that mm -hmm. asked to, for us to reduce, um, she was actually asking about sidewalks. We obviously are trying to get away from sidewalks because there's sidewalks to nowhere. 
um, other than obviously within the development they are, but they don't connect to anything. Um, so she was just asking, you know, or if you provide them, you have to provide for those rumbles and then the connections, um, yeah. which we wouldn't even need to do because it would only be in this particular subdivision. There's no other way to do it because Flint doesn't have them, Chestnut doesn't have them. And then the other question she was asking is if we would reduce our, our radius, the, the, the radii at the ends of each street, because the subdivision rules require 30 feet, she asked if we would reduce them. We did not seek that waiver, but if the board wants us to do that, I mean, we obviously will, because they're very why large. Would we, why would we do that? I, I have no idea. It's well, it's traffic calming. That's what she's saying here is that if we reduce, I'm not asking for it, but she asked if we reduce the radii, then we would calm traffic. Yeah, but more people will drive over the curb too. So <laughs> there you go. Oh, they will. Probably Jill, is that is that the yeah, access yeah. board? Somebody from the access board? Yes, it is. I um and her name That's is true. Megan, I believe. Um Commission uh, on Disability. Meg Robertson. Yeah, now it's access board basically. Yeah, so, so um, the, sidewalk, That's a weird one. the sidewalk thing, I have a little bit of a, um, a question about. I mean, if you, if you, um, you know, I'm not even talking about disability people here, I'm talking about average people just decided to go for a walk. And now, one of my pet peeves has always been that we put sidewalks on both sides of the street. And then when you drive down that street, the people are all walking in the middle of the road. Nobody on the sidewalks. So, so uh, it's a little bit of a pet peeve. However, I, I do think that, um, and we don't plow those sidewalks in the winter time, so that means they're only is uh, three months out of the year. You don't use them anyway. Um, but by the same token, I think that they provide at least on one side of the street access for people to travel. Uh, perhaps to a collection point for school bus pickup, you know, something like that. So I think there is some value to the sidewalk thing. So uh, okay, I'm not. Um, and, and again, uh, it, it's it's not a it's not a main road, so two sides wouldn't be necessary. Um, and again, I you know one of there's one particular subject who they would they were just adamant to have sidewalks on both sides and. And I have to drive through that uh, every now and then. And there's always there's nobody on the sidewalks. So we're all in the middle of the street because the road's 30 feet wide. What's the width of the roadway here? 28 feet. Yeah. See, so if you're going to not have sidewalks and you're going to have people walking in the street and then two cars passing each other, I think there's an issue there. I think we would need to, uh, I think we would need to provide at least one side. Okay. And, and, and that's just for travel within the subdivision. I understand that it doesn't hook up to anything, but um, it may at some point, and that's where we've looked at a few others. We put the single one in, and knowing that at some point in the future, perhaps a sidewalk will come by, and uh, it will and we can pick it up. So, and, and that has worked out in a couple of places. Okay, I I can go back. Okay. Yeah. Is that Warren, is there? Go ahead, Dave. Just going to ask, our, so you're you're talking about sidewalks within the division. What about that 550 linear feet on Flint? Well, actually, or, I have a, quite a bigger question about Flint. Um, <laughs> yeah, you want to drive very slowly down Flint Street because it's horrible. Um, was there any plan whatsoever to do any street improvements there? I mean, uh, you know. I mean, no. It's only a 13 lot subdivision, so there's really not that kind of economics on it. Right. Um, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, to provide a, an extension for a sidewalk at some point wouldn't be that bad to do, but on Flint, I don't know the, where that would go on Chestnut. It appears that there could be some possibility, but yeah, on yeah. Flint, I can even do an aerial to share with you. Cause I did actually yeah, my, look no, at my, that. My, I think my concern, I think I voiced my concern is strictly for, for travel within the subdivision, I think is what needs to happen. Because if you're going to have those homes, they're probably not going to be. Uh, right. They're going to be kids there, and they're going to need to be able to travel to a collection point for school bus and so forth. So. Right. So your point is, is look, make sure the kids have a safe way to get to the bus and get safe and, uh, way to and get home. Hopefully. And I, I understand. 
Yes, but you're basically. But Warren, are you talking about so at the 145 or 150 foot opening, or at the frontage, if you will, on Chestnut? Is that what you're referring to? Um, no. Nope. I'm talking about within the subdivision. Yeah, I'm not as. I mean, to me, like Jill said, it's a. It's not like a. It's only a 13 home subdivision, so within it, I'm not as concerned. But I think just even at that. 150 foot end to have that radius out and have sidewalk right there even if there's no sidewalk in chestnut because back to your point about school buses that's where school bus is going to stop probably it's i don't know if it even would go up into chestnut you know i mean up into uh crestview but they they would need to be able to walk crestview to get to chestnut so so they need uh, yeah. so so uh, so it could be that at where it and, and Chestnut is probably the most likely pickup point. I think that's, I think you're correct on that. So, so um, if a short section of sidewalk on either side of, of that entrance way is, you know. Oh, staying, it's easy um, to do too, because you can see, I just shared my screen with you. You yeah. can see that at the very front, we yeah. own property there. And it, right. while yeah. there is wetland further in, there is definitely room in that front, that lot 10 at the very beginning to create something without a doubt, you can see that. Yeah. So that would, uh, and that would, uh, so a small section of sidewalk there would probably be uh, okay. good. And then I don't know if you would need it, you know, a small a section on either side of the Flint Street opening there, but um, um, it's it's kind of funny how when you finally, when you do that, somebody will find a way to hook up to it. So, cause if yep. you get out, yeah, yeah. So that, there's a, there's a, we're not, I don't think we'd be looking for a lot, but something to provide a location for, you know, uh, people to, if the kids to get picked up and, and so forth. So. Right, because I would think the school buses aren't going to go up Flint. They're going to stop at Chestnut, uh, most likely. Yeah. Yeah. The school bus does go up Flint. I followed one up. Oh, before. oh wow, okay. But they don't stop, they just, they're cutting through. Yeah. So. No, that's easy to do. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, and that was, I mean, that was our real presentation. And now we just need to respond and get back to you with modified plans. So I don't know. I may hate well, to do this. A couple of think... questions, and I'm going to let the board ask you some questions yeah. if they have any. So, um, so my first question has to do with the quote-unquote country drainage. Um, I would think, and and I think I saw it when I looked through one of the plans. I saw. Uh, water flow, some little red arrows saying the direction of water flow but i'm not sure that it was aimed at showing how the water got from the street or from the upper areas to uh the detention ponds or the lower areas um because i think that's just to just to have country quote unquote country drainage all the way along there and not have a, a collection uh pattern of some kind or some kind of an idea of where the water is going to flow so that the grading is done in such a way that the water will get to the detention ponds. Because you have, what, five separate units here, five separate detention ponds? Oh, I think there's not. Danielle, there are many. There's a lot of them. I can have him add to the plan to show how the grading elements and what the actual flow of water and how you collect. I can do that even through the country drain. Because I would want to know, I, I think I would want it before I was be comfortable with country drainage, I'd want to know that it's, um, I'd want to know that the, that it's not going to be running down somebody's driveway or yep. run, yep. Uh, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, I yep. think we'd be yep. remiss if we let that happen. <laughs> um, I agree. So, uh, so again, uh, that uh, showing the flow, I, and again, one of the plans does have some little red arrows on it, but I couldn't find, you know, and it did say water flow, but then I couldn't find out where the, I think it was just only for that one location, but no, you could make sure uh, you could do I'll something make sure he like makes that. It clear. Yeah, yeah because you have some grades that, you know, you have your road grades and they don't look to be too excessive. Okay. So, um, so it shouldn't be too difficult to decide where the water's going to go and give us an idea so we know that we're not going to be, you know, Absolutely. pouring water down somebody's driveway. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I'm going to, uh, is that the rest of the board? Uh, if, uh, if they have any questions and if not, then I'll open it to the public for whatever input we might get from them at this particular point. So anybody on the board have a, if you want to let your screen share go there, Jill, that would oh, be. Oh, I apologize. Yes. Okay. So.
<laughs> if they if they have a comment. So anybody, any comments from the board? So um, before we go, Mr. Jameson, uh, you, did you ever wanted to have uh, some input here as well? Unmute yourself. Um, no, I'm just saying that I appreciate the opportunity to have uh, Joe present for us. Uh, looking forward to working with the town. Okay. Um, okay. Um, nothing from the board? You guys are all set? Okay. Um, I'm going to open up to the public. If uh, anybody in the that's on Zoom here with us would like to ask a question or make a comment, uh, please let me know in some way. Um, um, to put a hand up or or uh, just uh, say something to me so I know you want to talk. Any input? I have a question. This is Debbie Lewis. I live at 15 Flint Street. Okay, good. I the I am directly abutting the part of the property that's going to be developed, and there is a creek that runs. So I have a right against my property line is a creek and then um, some conservation land. And I'm just concerned that there's not going to be any building on any of the land that's um, considered conservation land. That would be my main question and concern. So we are not, yeah, we're, we're keeping away the, the required 12 feet and we're obviously keeping out of the wetland area. So yes, we are respecting that. And as far as, I hate to do this again, but I'm gonna share one more time. Um, so the, I, I believe that where your property is, and I don't know for sure, is it um, the I'm first- I'm next to number one. Okay, you're up at the top, you're next to number one. So the home that will be, will be constructed is quite a distance away from your home and there's in between the two of you is a big piece of conservation land. And we yeah. are, it looks to me like about 50 feet away from it. Okay. And will the trees that are currently there, like will there be, a, will the, you know, cutting down of any trees be as limited as possible? For, we are for privacy yes. and for growth and all that. Okay. So exactly. We are trying. So the way we've actually designed the home was we pushed it as far as we can over to near where a lot two is so that we preserve, you know, the area against your property. And I believe it's BVW. So there is some um, buffer there. I'm going to actually, I, I, are you still able, are you able to see the screen? Are you looking at that? Yes. Oh, okay. So good. So here we go. See the screen I just put up? Yep. Okay. So this is the area near your home that basically mm -hmm. this area will stay, you know, as wooded as we possibly can. And then it looks to me like the distance is probably, I, that has to be, I probably can measure, can't I? One second. <laughs> oh, I can't on this. It's probably a good, um, that's 30, it's got to be more than 100 feet away from the more than that of, of space that is not going to be um, graded even. Okay. Because it looks to me like that wetland is actually more BVW than anything else. Okay. It, it may be helpful just to zoom in and show her that 12 foot do not disturb because even, even in the event that somebody moves into that home and wants to do more, they, they, they can never go past that line. No, never. Right. If you, if you show her where that is, that would probably be helpful just so she understands the maximum you know, clearing yep. that they could possibly do there. Absolutely. So I'm going to really zoom in. So here's here's the lot one. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. If I could only get to it, my, pro my phone <laughs> my thing doesn't want to go. Okay. So there's this 25-foot buffer that runs along the property. But you can see where lot one has its home situated. And then we are showing where the, the, the tree line is. That green squiggly line is, is yep. where we're not disturbing beyond. Okay. All right. And, and then, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, and then the two dash lines are the... I believe oh, I is the, yeah. the 12 yeah. foot buffer, the two lines beyond that. So the one nearest the house would be, you know, by law, they can't go, they can't do anything within that zone. So okay. there is a portion, I guess, on the back right of that lot that they could do additional clearing if they got approved with conservation. 
Okay. And, and also, just so you'll know, the when the when the Jill used the word the uh, BVW, that's the bordering vegetated wetlands. That's what that means. Thank you. And then one last question, just for my own perspective. So there's currently a property that was sold, obviously, on Flint Street that has a driveway. Is the Crestview Drive that comes off of Flint Street, is that the location of the current driveway or somewhere close to that? Does anyone know? Yeah, you so can actually see it in light. It's very light on the plan, but it's right in the roadway. Okay. Yes. You see it there, so the that, kind of dashed lines within the roadway. Yes. So that's meant to be the current driveway. Yes. Okay. All right. That's helpful. I'm just trying to get a sense of how close people will be and, you know, what the, because that was a very, you know, having one house there set way back was a very different situation than the entryway to a 13 new homes. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, thank, you. thank you. Okay, Jill, if you could unshare, we'll. Um... Oh, again, I keep doing that. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> so I can ask if there's anybody else that has any questions or comments. So this will. Um, so this this is a public hearing, and it's going to stay open. Um, this is just the first hearing, the first time we're going through everything in there. I have a few questions. Oh, go ahead. Um, this is Dennis Curran from 43 Chestnut Street. Yes. And we have a lot of water problems in the backyard uh, that come off of the current driveway over to the wetland, and then there is a car on under the street, we just got flooded with the bad stone of Ida, um, and the town had to cut a, um, clean out the culvert there. But I'm very worried about the water coming off of the Chestnut Street or the Crestview for the home that's going to be right behind me. And I was wondering, there's a stone wall up there, because we have a brick that goes along the back of our property and to the right um, on Crestview. So are they taking down the stone wall and how many trees will be taken down? Will they be blasting? So I don't, I don't know if there's going to be blasting. I don't, I, that isn't something I know right now. Um, but as far as the water, um, you know, we're required under stormwater management to not harm you and to not allow our water. And that's why Mr. Pierce was asking for us to um, better define our flow patterns. So at this point, it's going to be reviewed by the town's engineer, a peer review engineer, and we need to ensure that we're not going to direct water to you or to harm you. Or to the house behind you. That that was that was the basis of my question because when I looked it over, I can see possibilities of issues. Okay. Um, yeah. And, okay. and that's why I that's why I brought that up. Yep. I did look these plans over fairly as closely as I could. So. Yep. And no, Thank we're gonna you. we're gonna provide for that. Okay. Go ahead, please. Thank you. I have one more question. There's a pond. Um, behind us. I'm sorry. There... I'm so sorry. There's a pond behind us um, that has a lot of water, and I understand from the plan that that house is going to be built further beyond that. So, um, well, first of all, they can't build in the pond any wetland, and they're going to have again the same. Conditions that were that were talked about for the last person that she spoke to uh, will, ex will would exist for this particular process as well. In other words, no wet building in the wetlands in the twelve foot no disturb zone, which is this twelve foot of upland that they can't disturb, as well as the not disturbing the wetlands. Okay. So um, that any building that was done would definitely be further back, so to make sure it was in the upland area. All right, excellent, thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, 
Okay, anybody else have any questions? Mr. Chairman, uh, I just have a question on what is the plan with construction? How long is the duration for the site prep and then the actual construction of all the homes? Sure. So, I mean, the building process, you know, once we get started with the road, it's usually 12 to 18 months to go through, get it done, put everything in, and then um, start the homes. Um, 14 homes, it, 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 it's 13, excuse me. It simply depends on the market. I mean, it just depends. So the roadway itself will go in. It won't even take six months. You know, we'd love for it to take 18 months, but I, I mean, Dave, I, I'm going to ask Dave to speak maybe a little bit to it. We always estimate about 18 months, but I can't, I can't. Home construction is whatever it's going to be, but the roadway, Dave, six months, right? Yeah, I think that's true. Um, obviously depends on when we start too and market conditions, but you know, we've done other subdivisions, not not as large. We've done a, a bunch of fours and we've had them done within about 12 to 14 months. Um, that's soup to nuts. Um, and, you know, building a few extra, building more houses doesn't really slow it down because they go stage by stage. Um, so really getting that road in and getting all the approvals, we should be able to move pretty quickly. Yeah, I would say, I would say realistically, you can expect a two year window uh, by, by the end of which you should be pretty much done. Yeah, at most, yep. Yeah, yeah. But and then I it says, when would we start? I mean, the start date, you know, it depends if, if the project gets approved, when it gets approved. So if it gets approved in the dead of winter, it's not going to start until spring. So right. if it gets, it depends. Yep. Yeah. I just asked the question because we have a number of subdivisions in this town that are taking if you average out what the per home uh, duration is, it's three times your number, probably at least. Yeah, we don't, I mean, so the Jamesons do a lot of building and I don't anticipate them taking that long. This is not their first um, development. So my guess is it won't be as extended. Yeah, um, the construction loan is based on time as well. So we, we, as we work with banks, we've got to meet standards with them as well. Right. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I, ju I just want to, I asked the question because it, it does, we have a few of those and that's very disruptive on the neighbors and this development, it's very, it's much more protected in the back there. So I don't, I don't see this as being disruptive. I think construction vehicles exiting out Flint would be disruptive. Uh, you know, there's, there's nothing you can do about not coming out on Chestnut and coming in on Chestnut and, and making sure the erosion, you know, mats are in place and all that. But I mean, that's, I, I think you're set up to have a, a, a better, or for the neighbors to have a better experience um, until you get to say, you know, um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Deb, Debbie Lewis is on, I think, you know, once you get up closer there, you know, you're going to hear some more stuff, but it, uh, overall, it's not as bad as some of these other ones I've seen um, that just go on and on and on. And, I, and that's just tough on the neighbors. No, I agree. Okay, anyone else have any uh, comments or questions? Okay, then we're going to uh, continue this public hearing and um, we do have a motion for continuation in here. Um, Would you like me to read it? Yes, you can. I have it. In I have it teed up here. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. I move the Community Planning Commission vote to grant the request of continuance of the public hearing for 239 Chester Street and 9 Flint Street until Tuesday, October 19th, 2021 at 8.30 p.m. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Another second by Dave. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. Okay. Aye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, have to, I have to roll call. I'm sorry, Dave. And because it's a Zoom meeting, I have to roll call. So, Jeremiah, how say you? Aye. Okay. And Ryan? Aye. And David? Aye. And myself is aye as well. So that's four in favor, no and uh, opposed. There are no opposed. Okay. See you on the 19th. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Oh, have a good one. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Did we say um, until the 19th, till October 19th at 8 p.m.? Yep. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Jill. Take thank care. you. Take care, everyone. Good night. Mr. Jameson, we wish you the best. Um, and, uh, our job Thank is you. not just to uh, look at all and approve it. Our job is also to make sure that, that it gets done in a reasonable amount of time and to support you in that. So we, we, we intend to do that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Red Sox, I want to turn it off. Uh, <laughs> good night. Thanks, David. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Okay, guys, um, I guess that's all we got for tonight. But you got anything else, Danielle? That was a no. No, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just 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 checking. Okay, thanks everybody for coming tonight, and um, um, we will see you on the nineteenth. And uh, not to worry, we'll get our we'll get our habitat stuff done. We'll get it done. We'll get them to, to approve it. Or Danielle, did you say the eighteenth, though, possibly? Yeah. So I was hearing that that could be a date for us to attend the meeting. I'll be in touch by email to confirm, um, but they were looking possibly to have the discussion on the 18th and also to do some EDC appointments um, with us that night. So yep. I'll be in touch before then and we'll talk about what now, we need to there. probably, I, I, when we go to this meeting, we need to have all our ducks in a row and we need to nail them down as to what it is they want to do here. Because this, you know, everything was, just a bit too generic. So let's see what let's see what's really going on. Okay. All right. A good night to all. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks.